Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to continue talking about knockoffs, specifically how exactly to construct them. So remember from the last video that in essence, what we want is we want to create a knockoff denoted by X tilde that has the same covariance structure as X, but we want that for any specific feature XJ, its knockoff X tilde J will be as orthogonal as possible. And the reason we want this is that when we calculate our test statistic in step two, we want them to give different scores. Yeah, because if X tilde J, if the knockoff will be um, very correlated with XJ or even the same, then our algorithm in step two will give them the same score and we won't be able to tell them apart. Yeah, and basically what it comes down to is that if we take our augmented matrix yeah, X star, uh, which is just our original features and the knockoffs together, we want that their covariance structure uh, will be like this, okay? This is what we want. And we want this to be, in order to be a valid covariance matrix, to be positive semi-definite, yeah? So bigger than or equal to zero. So if we define, um, instead of diagonal S, I'm just going to write big S for now, then the first thing I have to talk about is the sure complement. So uh, the sure complement says that if you have a block matrix, and this is like a block matrix, uh, if you know that A is positive definite, then um, the entire matrix is positive semi-definite if and only if uh, C minus B transpose A minus one B is also positive semi-definite. And you can also do this for um, the other way around. So you can also say, if you know that C is positive uh, definite, then A is positive semi-definite if and only if A minus B, C minus one, B transpose is positive uh, semi-definite. Okay, so if we apply the sure complement on our matrix here, then we get that um, this is positive semi-definite if and only if, and once we apply it, yeah, once we take this uh, minus this transpose, this minus one, this uh, then we a lot of terms will cancel out. You can do the compilation yourself, and we will be left out with this, okay? And note that S transpose is equal to S because S is a diagonal matrix. Also note that technically, if I'm not mistaken, this matrix is, we know that it's positive semi-definite. Yeah, it also makes sense because it's a X transpose X matrix, so it's very easy to show that it's positive semi-definite. Um, but uh, in general, covariance matrices are also mostly positive definite. And this is unless uh, one variable is an exact linear function of the others. So I'm not sure, I guess they kind of assume that this is positive definite. I'm not exactly sure. Okay, so uh, nevertheless, we got that this is positive semi-definite. This is what we want. If and only if this thing is positive semi-definite. And now we can reverse this. Yeah, we say, okay, according to the Schur lemma, then this is positive semi-definite. If we construct the matrix that gives us this, we get that this thing is, this is positive semi-definite, if and only if this is positive semi-definite, yeah? Because we can take this minus S, this minus one S, we get the exact same thing. And now we can take the Schur complement again, only starting from, yeah, we say this is, suppose that this is positive definite and we start here, then it's this minus S, this minus one S, and we get this thing over here. And uh, if we calculate this, we just get this, and we can multiply by two and move this aside, yeah? And this thing over here is called the Lovner order, yeah? So all that this thing means is just that two sigma minus S is positive semi-definite. Okay, so to conclude, uh, we want to create knockoffs such that this matrix is positive semi-definite, and this matrix is positive semi-definite if and only if two sigma is, uh, you know, Lovner order greater than S, okay? And yeah, so they already give you the answer, okay? So which, uh, how can we construct such knockoffs? So here, this is the answer, okay? The knockoffs will just be X, this thing over here, plus, uh, U tilde, which I'll explain in a second, and C, which I'll also explain in a second. Okay, so this is the solution. They just give it to you. And U tilde is an orthogonal matrix that has these two properties. Okay, so it's 
orthogonal. So if itself, it's the i, and it's also orthogonal to x. So u transpose x is equal to zero. And we'll see in, uh, soon uh, how to construct u. And c transpose c is this sure complement that we saw before. Yeah, It's this thing over here. OK, so basically they are doing some sort of, uh, I don't know, decomposition, a Cholesky decomposition maybe of this thing over here to two matrices, and they take only one of them. OK, so let's see that this, is the, this matrix indeed uh, gives us the, the structure that we want. OK, so uh, if we take x tilde transpose x tilde, we get this thing over here. OK, we can uh, already do the transpose here. Uh, and now if we take this thing times this thing plus this thing times this thing plus this thing times this thing plus this thing times this thing, we get all of this. Okay, and note that this thing cancels out. Why? Because we said that u transpose x is equal to zero. So this thing is zero. And so this whole thing cancels out and we get the same thing over here. And in the last one, we said this thing, it doesn't, it's not zero, but it's equal to i. So, so now let's open this. So i transpose it's i, x transpose x i, we just are left with this. This times this gives us this and we do it again. So we get twice this. And then in the end, we get this transpose x transpose x, this thing. And it's basically just this, okay? Okay, so this took care of this. Now all of the, these fell down and C transpose C, well, it's just, we said, it's just this thing over here. So we add adding this and this cancels out because Sigma minus one is exactly, Sigma is X transpose X. So Sigma minus one cancels and it gives I the same thing here. So S transpose is S, so it's the same. So we get minus two S plus two S, they cancel out plus S transpose or S uh, Sigma minus one S. Uh, minus s sigma minus one s, so this cancels out, and we are just left with x transpose x. So, uh, yeah, so we see that uh, the knockoffs have the exact covariant structure as the original uh, axis. And now let's see what happens if we take x tilde transpose x. So remember, here we want that in the diagonal we get uh, as uh, this minus s thing. Yeah, we want the minus diagonal s. So again, we take this transpose x, we calculate it, we get this thing over here, and um, yeah, x transpose x stays. Yeah, so this becomes s transpose sigma minus one transpose, which is the same, x transpose x, it cancels out. So we get i minus s, and this here, and this thing over here, it's just zero, yeah? again, because of the u transpose x. So yeah, we get x transpose x minus s, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, how did they get to this? I have no clue. Um, I guess they kind of played with the sure complement. I'm not exactly sure if any of you guys have any idea, I'll be happy to hear. Um, yeah, so this is basically the solution. And the only part missing is how exactly to calculate the u tilde. So. First of all, the u tilde exists because um, remember, we are having more rows than twice the number of columns. So if we take, uh, if we duplicate the matrix, then still uh, we have more, more rows than columns. And what this means is means that we can find ortho orthogonal vectors in this space that will uh, be able to give us the properties that we wanted. Yeah, that uh, they will be on one hand completely orthogonal to x, and on the other hand, um, orthogonal to themselves and give uh, the i matrix. OK, so the way you, you do this is basically you do the householder reflection method. But um, in the code, they are doing this as part of the QR decomposition. OK, so you take a to be the data matrix x plus a matrix of zeros yeah? that is just the same shape as x but it's with zeros. And what you want, you want to create a sequence of orthogonal matrices, Qs, yeah, such that uh, once you multiply them by A, you get uh, the R, the, the triangular matrix, okay? And in this case, R is basically going to be 
some triangular matrix and a lot of zeros. Yeah, these zeros will be uh, related to these zeros. Yeah, so if we would do the QR decomposition only in X, we would get some Q and R and R slash. But since we're doing it on the zeros, this will be the shape of it. And what is the Q uh, K? Well, the Q K in every stage is the identity of K over K, and um, the F of K, where F of K is basically this projection matrix, which is defined like this. And VK is defined to be this thing over here. Okay, so for example, in Q1, okay, we have that E1 is basically just the um, unit basis, yeah, uh, of one in the first uh, element and zero on all the rest. And Y1 is basically the first column of A. Okay, so the first column of X technically. And then when you go and you calculate this projection thing over here and you get basically Q, okay? Actually here it should be K minus one, K minus one, yeah? So for the first, for the first matrix, it's only F, yeah? And then for the second matrix, you have one, zero, zeros and the rest. And this is how you keep building those things. Um, eventually you get all these matrices. And so Q is defined to be the inverse of these matrices, right? So you get this is equal to this. And then all of these matrices are also invertible. You invert all of them. You multiply by their inversion in uh, opposite order. And you get basically, this is Q. Okay, and now this basis over here, you take U uh, tilde to be the second half of it. Okay. and you can see, first of all, that U transpose U is still I because you're taking some, yeah, you are basically taking dot products of uh, these orthogonal bases with each other. And also U transpose X is giving you zero. Why? Because U transpose X is just this uh, Q matrix P of the vectors P till 2P and you transpose them uh, and multiply this with the Q of one to P. So they're all going to be zeros, yeah? So this thing over here will be zeros, and then it doesn't matter what this is, you will get zero. So this is uh, the way that you create uh, U tilde. This is the way to create basically our knockoffs, yeah? But there's only one thing is that we didn't really define the S's. We just say, okay, if you have an S, then this is how you build it. But yeah, we want to maximize the S such that this still stays positive semi-definite. Okay, so this now becomes an, kind of an optimization problem. Okay, and they give two methods in the paper to solve this. The first one is, let's assume that you want to have an equal correlation structure. Okay, so suppose that you want, yeah, S is basically um, this matrix of S1 until S, SP. Okay, and here there are zeros. But suppose we want them to all be equal to one another. So in this case, it basically becomes a bit of a linear algebra and basic optimization. So we want to maximize the SJs. Yeah, we want the SJ to be as big as possible, subject to that our matrix G is still positive semi-definite. And we saw that this is equivalent to maximizing S. And here S, I will write it as a vector, such that two sigma is greater or equal than diagonal of S, yeah? And that S is greater or equal to zero because we want to reduce the correlation and not increase it, yeah? So uh, because all the S are equal, so what is diagonal S? It's just S times I. It's just some scalar S times I now when we, when we limit ourselves to solutions where the SJs are equal. So this problem becomes basically this problem where S now is a scalar, yeah? It's not a vector anymore, it's just a scalar. And now basic linear algebra says that, well, this thing over here, which is equal to this thing over here, is only true if and only if the minimum um, eigenvalue is greater or equal to zero. When you have a, an eigenvalue of some matrix with uh, an identity matrix, yeah? Of some scalar times an identity matrix, then only in this case, it's this eigenvalue uh, operator is kind of linear, yeah? So you can break this thing over here to this thing over here, okay? And I'll put a link in the description 
uh, that shows why this is true. So basically, this thing, so we got to this thing over here. We need that this is greater or equal to zero, but this only happens if this thing over here is greater than or equal to s. So the entire problem reduces to maximize s such that s is between zero. It has to be greater than or equal to zero, like we said here, and it has to be smaller than this thing over here. So of course, the obvious solution is just to set it at the maximum, which is this thing over here. Since we don't want that our structure over here, yeah, this thing over here, we don't want it to go below zero. We don't want one minus s to go below zero. So that would kind of defeat the entire purpose that we want them to be as uh, orthogonal as possible. Then we take the minimum of that, of s, j, and one. And this is why we have the minimum over here, okay? So this is the first method, the equal correlation method. A second method that they show is the SDP method, okay? So SDP stands for semi-definite programming. And what they want, they want instead of, they want to basically minimize the sum of all of the diagonals. Yeah, they want that the sum of the diagonal will be as, uh, as minimal as possible, remembering that uh, SJ has to be between zero and one. So we don't want to go below uh, zero in the diagonal. And this is so that the G matrix is actually still positive semi-definite. Now, I'm not an expert in semi-definite programming. I'll just give, so take everything I'm saying from now on with an even greater grain of salt than what I said before. Okay, so what is SDP? It's basically a generalization of linear programming uh, of LP uh, to metric space. So, at linear programming is a problem of this sort. Yeah, you want to minimize or maximize some um, linear function uh, subject to some uh, constraints that define a polytop. And note that the x greater or equal to zero here is a convention because we could also have taken this to be x smaller or equal to zero. Yeah, so suppose that our problem was subject to x smaller or equal to zero, and suppose that it was, let's say, maximum, yeah? So maximum C transpose X, this is equivalent to minimum of minus C transpose X, yeah, subject to blah, 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 X smaller or equal to zero. So what we can do now is we can say, okay, let's define X star to be minus X, yeah? And so this problem can become minimum of C transpose X star subject to uh, X star uh, greater or equal to zero. Okay, so it's basically a convention, I think. Yeah. Anyway, this, this is linear programming and to go to semi-definite programming, you basically say X is no longer a vector. Let's take X to be a matrix. And then you can look at my minimum or maximum of the trace of some uh, matrix, yeah, times uh, another matrix, subject to some constraint that again defines some polytop. And instead of x being greater or equal to zero, instead of this being uh, basically an element wise greater or equal to zero, you take x to be semi definite greater than zero, yeah? So you take it to be um, positive semi definite. And again, the positive or negative doesn't really matter. And the last condition, it turns out that uh, it defines a convex set, yeah? So uh, if we look, for example, at the matrix of this form, yeah, X, where here you have two different um, uh, numbers and here you have a third number, but it's uh, symmetric, then this is the shape that it defines. Yeah? If you say it's positive semi-definite, then it defines this convex shape and you can see this shape is convex, yeah? Or if you take, let's say a three by three matrix, with one in the diagonal and then X, Y, Z, then this is the shape that it defines. And you can see again, that it's convex. There are also generalized uh, semi-definite programming that incorporate uh, LMIs, linear matrix inequalities. And basically this stays the same, only um, here you get uh, some combination of, of matrices. Yeah, it's not just X, uh, greater or equal to zero, it's some combination of X greater or equal, and it could be then also some other matrix, yeah? So we can see that this problem kind of fits to the SDP because 
minimizing this is like maximizing this. And so we can take, for example, C to be I and our X is S, yeah? And we can take, yeah, you know, this thing over here translates to these equations over here. It's basically defined some polytop. And we can take the E's to be like these matrices with uh, minus one in the diagonal. And then this thing over here will give us minus S and we can set F to be minus two sigma, and then switching, we get this condition over here. Okay, so this is why this is a semi-definite programming. The way it is solved, as I understand, it's using something called interior point method. Yeah, and again, I'm not an expert in this, so maybe in the future. The important thing is that computers can solve it. Yeah, let's switch into R. Okay, so, uh, let's create the data exactly like in the last video. And instead, you can feed the you can choose the method already in the knockoff filter, yeah, but you can also just create the knockoff. Um, and you do this with the command create fixed and you give it the method, yeah, if equi for equal correlation, and you can see it has some objects in it. One object is the original x. You can see that the original x is equal to the original x, only normalized. Yeah, it's the same thing. And it also gives you the knockoffs. And you can see that the knockoffs are kind of different. OK, and this is the code that uh, runs this. It basically does a decompose. It, this decompose gives uh, SVD decompose, and it also creates the u tilde that we saw. Yeah, and then it calculates the minimum uh, eigenvalue of the of the matrix uh, sigma, yeah? And it takes the minimum of two lambda and one like before, and then it just constructs the, um, the knockoff matrix, which is the matrix that we saw over here. Yeah, this is just constructed, okay? And the decompose, you can see that what it does, it's, it, it does the QR decomposition. Uh, instead of the X, it does it on the, you uh, the SVD decomposition of X. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. This is how you create the U matrix. And you can also create an SDP. You just change the method to SDP. Uh, nothing fancy over here. Basically just, yeah, it makes some, calculates some things needed and then it calls solve SDP on the problem. And then it constructs the knockoff just like in the equation that I've shown you before. Okay, so this is all I wanted to show in this video. I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next one.